Jackson County Health Department, the Director of Environmental Services, Don Haydock, and Emergency Preparedness Coordinator, Stephanie Baker. Good morning. 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 Good morning. Do we have an emergency? No. Yes. <laughs> That's no the good news That of the is day. good. <laughs> good news of the day. <laughs> that is good news. I want to, can I ask you about mosquitoes first? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, I just came in from collecting traps. Okay. So. Didn't catch very many. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, but obviously we haven't had many mosquitoes due mm -hmm. to the, what I assume is lack of moisture. Yep. Will that continue or does it all just depend on rain? I'm wondering if it will well, be a milder summer. Weather, weather is definitely a major factor. So we yeah. finally got some rain after we three weeks. Uh, and, and depending on how much rain and how often we continue to get it, basically mosquitoes need some pools of water to mm -hmm. breed. And if it just, sh the rain shuts off again for three weeks, they have no chance to breed. Well, that's, so. That has been enjoyable. Well, so far, but so we're, far, we're gonna yeah. have rain. We're you gonna don't see. live on a dirt road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. <laughs> so uh, here in Michigan, we don't have uh, the hurricanes. We don't have the uh, volcanoes. We don't have. Uh, we've had forest fires. Yeah. Dry weather. Um, what are some of the other uh, dangers that uh, could impact our our health and safety uh, during the summer months? Well, certainly all of the storms, the tornadoes, the wind, those kind of things. But uh, Memorial Day week, it was heat. And mm -hmm. we did see an increase in, in people showing up at the emergency department due to, to heat stroke and that type of thing. Older people are vulnerable to those extreme temperatures. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't do the leaving the kids in the car, uh, mm -hmm. stay out of the sun during the middle of the day, those kind of things, and, and monitor what's going on. Yeah, I saw a dog in the car at a parking lot the other day, and uh, that's not a good idea. I mean, it was, no. Yeah. No. yeah, it's not a good idea anyways, anytime. No. In never. my opinion. So. Even in the dead of winter, January, that's right. you know, yeah. happens to be a zero degree day, not a good idea. Not good. No, not good. We, uh, we've been talking about ticks the last five or six years here in Jackson. It seems like they've... Uh, they've gotten more prevalent in our area. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, we, have, we do have ticks here in Jackson. And uh, what do you do if you get bit by a tick? Yeah. Well, I will confirm that yes, we do have ticks <laughs> because I pulled one off of myself last night, last setting, night? The, setting the traps oh, <laughs> where I sat. Um, I mean, that is the fact of life. I've seen yeah. an increase over the past five to 10 years, just okay. going out hiking or whatever. I mean, I went through the first 40, 50 years of my life with right. hard, ever, hardly ever seen a tick, you know, multiple times per year now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that didn't used to occur. Um, if you happen to have a tick, and I hope I'm answering your question, not I digressed. Uh, uh, you want to use tweezers, get mm -hmm. as close to the skin and the head, and then just slowly try to pull it off with constant pressure. Uh, it will come out. If the mouth parts remain, don't worry about it, but wash antiseptic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically clean the wound, mm -hmm. clean that spot. And then, you know, it takes at least 24 hours, but more than likely 36 to 48 hours before uh, Lyme disease can be transmitted. Mm -hmm. Uh, by that black legged tick. Can you sp um, s spray your uh, patio or your yard to, uh, for, is it like tick spray? Well, it's uh, permethrins okay. or something along those lines, uh, mm -hmm. an insecticide uh, that works against mosquitoes, ticks. It'll help, okay, mm -hmm. but clearing the brush away and creating oh, that uh, brush free mm -hmm. zone mm -hmm. is your best defense uh, yeah. to uh, protect your patio. Yeah, there's, what, I've had a pile of leaves from last year, last <laughs> fall in your backyard's not a good spot. No, <laughs> probably not, <laughs> amongst others. <Yeah. laughs> so we had the hot weather last week. How do you know uh, whether you should go to the emergency room? What are the, I guess, the symptoms where something is overcoming uh, you and you're in danger? Well, if you go beyond the, for me, I often think once you get to the point you don't feel like you're sweating anymore, that you know okay, the body is reacting to the heat, obviously need to, to move to someplace cooler. Um, if you're starting that, that rapid pulse, I think that's a, a big one to look for as well. If you're starting to, if you get to the point of nausea, vomiting, passing out, obviously there's, there's a big concern there. 
Um, but I think most of us can identify that, that that's coming on before that and have mm -hmm. the opportunity to, to try to move out of the heat and, and get something cold to drink and, yeah. and relax a little bit. A lot of people are, just aren't prepared to go into the heat, you know, going in, yeah. lack of hydration, uh, proper clothing, all of that makes an impact, of course. And the shade is really good. Um, we don't think about how much hotter asphalt and concrete, mm -hmm. and a lot of times when you're around buildings, they block the wind and the breeze, and, and right. that makes a difference too to, to help with cooling your body. So, and find that nice, nice shady tree and, and take a little bit of a break. Yeah, all great uh, pieces of advice, and it can happen like all of a sudden. You just, yeah. you could be out and need to sit down, but it could be even worse. Yeah, I think, you know, paying attention to your body symptoms, and you know yourself, mm -hmm. and if you're out and about in an extreme hot day, you're going to be able to kind of tell when you're inching toward, you know, the danger mm -hmm. zone, so to speak. Uh, one other uh, danger of a summer we wanted to ask you about was bats, <laughs> and uh, we had uh, a bat in our house mm -hmm. last week. You did? Actually, we had two. Wow. <laughs> and they were like uh, flying in formation. Yeah. So they were probably oh, related. Okay. We think they were brothers. <clears throat> uh, one we captured. The <laughs> other, <laughs> we don't know. But how worried should people be, uh, like us, about um, the diseases that, uh, I guess rabies is what we mm -hmm. all think of when we think of bats. Is mm -hmm. that a very prevalent? Well, uh, Bats and rabies as well, you know, rabies in general, one of those classic high consequence, low risk potential mm -hmm. situations <clears throat> because rabies is rare. However, uh, without any prophylaxis, the consequences are neurological, including death, so high consequence. Mm -hmm. um, in a situation where fine waking up in the morning in your bedroom, and there's a bat on the wall or a bat on your bed or what have you. That's something serious to take care of. Uh, you know, if you can capture the bat, fantastic. Uh, using a coffee can or a box, if it happens to be on the wall or on, on the bed, and you cover it up, use a, another piece of cardboard, slide it under, mm -hmm. tape it up, secure it, a couple air holes, and then contact either the health department or your medical uh, thing or animal control mm -hmm. and discuss the situation uh, more than likely because you've captured it it can be tested and it'll be sent up to Lansing oh. you'll get tested very quickly and that kind of will determine whether the bat is positive or negative for rabies uh, you can't always just tell uh, rarely can you tell mm -hmm. whether a bat or other animals actually has rabies without testing. Could the bat have bit him without him waking up? Yes. <laughs> but why would he do that? Uh, what is the threat to a bat of a sleeping human? I really can't ask, answer that question. We don't have vampire bats here in Michigan. I do know that. Well, that's good. Uh, <laughs> they're the ones that will, you know, target livestock and need need a blood meal uh, for survival. Have you uh, had a bat in your house? I have never encountered a bat oh, in my well, house. Oh, well, there's two types of people, those that have. And those that <laughs> I think I may well. have them on the outside of the house. Yeah. 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 Stephanie, yeah. have you had a bat in your house? Not in my house, really? but I yeah. see them outside, <laughs> yeah. you know, around. Wow. So. You've had them. Of course. Yeah. Brandon, you've had them. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And, and one of the key prevention things to keep them out of your house is caulk your, you know, and it's good for insulation. Yeah. Caulk your house. Uh, any. That bats can get through a dime size. Yeah, it's hole. amazing. Yeah, and that's why you don't think they've left. You know, because and, where yep. would they go? Exactly. Maintain yeah. your siding so that it's firm against the uh, the sheathing. Uh, just look around you know, and fill up any holes. Um, there are companies out there that actually can kind of do this kind of work. If, mm -hmm. if you do have a bat problem where they're coming into your attic or what roof line or whatever. Um, there are techniques that the professionals use to eradicate it over uh, the colony of bats over time. So, All right. I've yet to find that company that will come and get the bats, but yeah, if you, you say are, they're there, you, I'll, yeah, I'll it sounds it. like you're a professional. It sounds. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I am. I've been researching this uh, for years. <laughs> uh, what else can we get uh, in, the, in the summer heat? Uh, Ticks. Well, we're going uh, out in the woods. You got uh, poison ivy, uh, 
Uh, of course, that's obviously a, a big <laughs> issue. <laughs> Hard to avoid. It is. Uh, some people call it the official ground cover of Michigan, yeah. <laughs> uh, depending on where you go. Um, but uh, yeah, poison ivy, uh, at some point you will become sensitized to it. Uh, I went a good 30 years without being sensitized, yeah. but now I am to some extent. Well, so many uh, risks of uh, this season, and we thank the health department for keeping us educated and safe. Thanks to both of you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, just pay attention to your surroundings and be aware. Uh, from the Jackson County Health Department, Don Haddock and Stephanie Baker. More of the morning show after this.